In a panic because you've been invited to a wedding and no dress code was provided? Well, hold your peace as we explain exactly what you can wear as a guest for a variety of formalities, seasons, and wedding types. A brief note here, today's video is sponsored by the German modern luxury watch brand Nomos Glashütte. I'm not a native German like Raphael, but hey, my heritage is German, so that's got to count for something, right? Nomos has great watches, but we'll talk more about them later in the video. Ironically, even if no dress code is officially listed, there is often an effective dress code. This will reflect the decorum and mood that the hosts wish to cultivate. And as a good guest, you should meet expectations for that level of decorum to the best of your ability. Fortunately, you can still estimate how casually or formally you're expected to dress by considering the following factors. Sometimes the invitation itself offers a clue. If the hosts have taken the trouble to send an invitation that appears more formal and dignified, then it stands to reason that they'll want their guests to dress in a similar way. What's typical of a formal invitation, then? Well, you can look for things like heavy off-white cardstock, cursive script, especially if it's embossed or debossed, and elevated verbiage, such as Mr. and Mrs. Fay humbly request your presence at the marriage of their daughter Daisy, etc. Conversely, a wedding decoration that is bold and colorful, fancifully decorated, humorously phrased, such as Jack and Diane are finally getting hitched, or transmitted only digitally, such as an email or text, suggests a more laid-back and casual wedding environment. Of course, you can't judge a book by its cover or an invitation by its cardstock, so let's delve deeper into the information featured on the invitation. Many wedding invitations suggest a way to dress that isn't technically a dress code. For example, you might even see something as abstract as dress like the star of your own musical adventure. The relative implied formality of these suggestions offers a great starting point. For instance, an invitation to don your sparkliest and most fun garb seems to suggest an invitation to dress in a more creative and expressive way. Meanwhile, the more sedate mantra, dress to impress, implies more conventional, formal garb. Next, where the nuptials are being held should also impact your planned outfit. Upscale hotels, country clubs, ballrooms, historic homes, and places of worship tend to invite a more formal way of dressing. After all, you would typically dress more formally when visiting a fancy club or a dining establishment, and that goes doubly for weddings. And to further emphasize the point on places of worship in particular, weddings taking place in religious institutions or those officiated by clergy are generally going to require more formal dress. This is because the inclusion of religious rites and elements adds another layer of decorum to the proceedings which should be reflected in your outfit. Meanwhile, places like casual restaurants, event halls, breweries, converted barns, and backyards are places where you would expect more casual weddings to be held, thus calling for more casual attire. We should also note here that destination weddings, especially beach weddings, tend to have their own unique rules. So peruse our resort attire content if you're attending one of these, and save a banana daiquiri for me. The time of day that the wedding takes place should also factor into your clothing choices. In general, daytime events tend to be more casual than comparable nighttime events because they have a brighter color palette. And you can learn more about how color affects formality in our general guide to the formality scale. Similarly, events taking place outdoors tend to be more casual than those taking place indoors. This is so that guests have more leeway to select garments and accessories suited to the realities of the weather. This is especially true of weddings taking place in warm or hot weather, allowing guests to take advantage of the colors and patterns often seen in that season, and to beat the heat in style. 
Finally here, if you're good friends with the wedding hosts, you can use your knowledge of them as a couple to understand how it might impact your clothing. My wedding, of course, was Batman-themed and everyone was in full costume. Holy matrimony! I'm kidding, of course, but on a serious note, balancing the considerations we've laid out here should help you to determine if how you're dressing for this wedding will be more casual, more formal, or somewhere in between. And after all this, if you're still in doubt, you can just ask. If you know the hosts well, at around the same time that you RSVP, you should casually contact them to ask what level of formality they're expecting. They'll likely welcome this as it shows that you're putting in the effort to be respectful of their wishes. And if you don't feel comfortable asking the hosts yourself, put the same question to someone else who knows them better, like a member of the wedding party, for example. Just don't hold off on this question until the last minute, as those involved with the wedding are going to be busy with plenty of other tasks. So, now that you've got a better idea of whether you'll be expected to dress formally, casually, or in between, let's get on with some outfit suggestions for each of these formality levels. First, if all signs point to a more formal wedding, then more formal attire is naturally for you. And this level of dressing could also be the right choice if you're not quite sure what you ought to wear. While it will be more formal, it will also be less obtrusive and therefore less likely to distract from the wedding couple. And at a wedding, it's better to be inconspicuously overdressed than distractingly underdressed. And that's exactly what ensembles like this should achieve. Simply pair a solid or very subtly patterned dark suit in colors like navy, charcoal gray, or perhaps dark brown with a white shirt or possibly a light blue shirt for a daytime wedding. Then add more formal accessories like those in conservative muted colors featuring small and classically inspired patterns. And for your footwear, go with Darby's or Oxford's in black or very dark brown. Business formal, cocktail attire, and semi-formal ensembles are all typical of this level of dressing, and we've got guides for all of them. Speaking of accessories, watches can be a subtle and understated way to add a bit of personality to your ensemble. This is especially true of a wedding without a dress code when you want to impart something unique without being distracting. Which brings us to today's video sponsor, Nomos Glashütte, who have graciously provided us with watches in their Orion line, specifically the Neomatic New Black models. Obviously, with their black color scheme featuring metallic elements in silver and gold, these watches would be an excellent choice for a well-defined dress code, black tie. But in keeping with the theme of today's video, they also expertly complement business formal, cocktail attire, and semi-formal ensembles. After all, their black leather straps, made from Horween Genuine Shell Cordovan, harmonize well with black leather shoes. And while Nomos is a German watchmaker, just one of many reasons why Raphael appreciates them, the Orion Neomatic New Black watches exude a subtle elegance that can suit British style or even a more dandy-inspired outfit. These automatic watches feature tripartite stainless steel cases with domed sapphire crystal glass, with reference numbers 346 and 366 featuring an anti-reflective coating on the inner side. And with a range of dimensions from 36.44 millimeters in width and 8.5 millimeters in height for reference number 396, to 40.5 millimeters in width and 9.4 millimeters in height for number 366, there's a size to suit most any wrist. The galvanized black dials set the tone of the watches and the baton style hands and diamond polished stamped indexes, either rhodium plated or in gold, provide a clean, understated look. Reference 366 also includes a date window at the three o'clock position. All three watches are powered by an in-house built Nomos Neomatic caliber with automatic winding. Today, I'm wearing reference number 396, the smallest of the three, to complement my smaller wrist size. 
It's powered by the automatic caliber DUW3001, sporting a power reserve of up to 43 hours and equipped with a proprietary escapement, the Nomos Swing System. Furthermore, while we've talked about these watches mainly in formal contexts today, they can also be worn with more casual outfits, as you're seeing in some of this supplementary footage. So thanks to Nomos for sponsoring today's video, and now let's continue with our advice for general wedding formality levels, moving more toward the middle of the formality scale. If when running through the casual and formal clues that we mentioned earlier, you find a mix of both that tends a bit more toward the casual, then this next dressing suggestion is for you. You'll find a lot of commonality here with the formal suggestions we just provided, but with subtle tweaks to make them a bit more casual. Here you can go for a solid or patterned suit in a traditional darker color, like a shade of blue, gray, or brown. But you could also consider medium-toned color varieties for hot weather, warm weather, or outdoor weddings. Your shirt should again be light in color, like white or light blue, but you can introduce some subtle patterning for a slightly more casual feel. Your accessory should again be dark and subtle, though you can include some lighter accent elements. Overall, you want sufficient contrast to provide some visual interest without becoming distracting. Our guide to combining pocket squares, ties, shirts, and suits covers the fundamentals of this in greater detail. And for footwear as well as other leather accessories, medium or dark brown is a safe bet here in most cases. This level of formality is associated with dress codes like more formal leaning business casual, business formal, and cocktail attire. Finally here, let's cover more casual outfit advice. This level of dress will be typical of fun and creative weddings. And if nearly all of the formality clues we discussed earlier tend toward the casual, then your hosts likely intend for you to dress this way. Generally here, you're going to want to go for a suit in blue, gray, or brown again, though you'll have more leeway with the color, as it can be medium-toned or perhaps even lighter, and it can also incorporate a pattern other than being solid, or you could go for a single or double-breasted model. And you could also forego a suit entirely and go with an odd jacket and trouser combination. In these cases, the jacket and trousers should either be tonally similar or more formal in nature, like a navy blazer with contrasting trousers. In warmer seasons, and especially outdoors, lighter colors could definitely be an option here. And fabric-wise, you could consider things like linen or cotton instead of wool. Your dress shirt should be light-toned and solid, or feature a non-distracting pattern. The safest choices will again be white or light blue, but depending on seasonality or the color theme of the wedding, you could also consider pastel shades in things like pink, lilac, yellow, green, or similar colors. You can wear light or medium-toned accessories, like neckties, bow ties, or pocket squares. And other accessories, like cufflinks or other jewelry, could also be more creative and subtly unexpected. For footwear and other leather accessories, consider tones like tan or medium cognac in dress shoes or perhaps even dress sneakers. Of course, you could also go with a darker brown if desired. This degree of formality is generally associated with business casual and the elusive dressy casual. And of course, you can find more styling ideas in our dedicated videos on those topics. Now, let's close today's video with a quick rundown of do's and don'ts for weddings without an explicit dress code. Don't assume that no dress code means it's a free-for-all. As we hope we've illustrated today, there's almost always at least an implied level of decorum. So do take the time to determine that expected level of attire. Your hosts will appreciate the effort and you'll be better prepared to enjoy yourself. Don't wear traditional formal attire. If your hosts wanted guests to wear morning dress, black tie, or white tie, they would have specifically requested it. 
A tuxedo or velvet dinner jacket might give someone the impression that you're part of the wedding party, and giving this impression when you aren't is one of the eight things you should never do when dressing for a wedding. Do wear at least a jacket and necktie. This simple classic style pairing is almost never out of place and will ensure that you won't be underdressed. And if you arrive to find that the wedding is especially casual and no other guests are wearing ties, it is of course an easy piece to remove. Don't dress to stand out. You'll notice that many of our suggestions today have come off as a little conservative for a festive event like a wedding. But when there's no dress code, it's up to you to ensure that you don't inadvertently dress in a way that will draw attention to you and away from the happy couple. So unless the hosts have emphasized their desire for an outlandish, creative wedding, don't wear anything that draws all eyes to you. It's their special day, not yours. Do dress comfortably. In other words, combine correct formality with practical items so you can have the best time possible. Dressing comfortably from the start will prevent you from feeling like you need to shed layers so you won't have to participate even if others start taking off their jackets, untucking their shirts, or loosening their ties throughout the evening. Don't be overly casual. In most cases, jeans, shorts, t-shirts, flip-flops, and other similar items are just going to be too informal even for a no-dress code wedding. And finally here, do have fun. Armed with the advice in this video, you should have a better idea of what to wear to a wedding without a dress code so that you can have the best time possible on that special day. So what would you wear, or what have you worn, to a wedding with no dress code? Let us know in the comments below. And in the meantime, we can examine the formality of the outfit that I've chosen to wear today. In today's video, as you've probably pieced together already, I'm wearing an ensemble consistent with the more formal end of the spectrum that we outlined earlier. My suit from Suit Supply is navy blue in color, single-breasted, and relatively trim, with just a bit of character coming from its peaked lapels and its weave. I've paired it with a simple white shirt from Charles Tirrett, featuring a conventional classic collar and French cuffs. Into the cuffs, I've inserted a pair of vintage cufflinks in silver tones with black inlays. These harmonize particularly well with the watch I'm wearing, which again is from Nomos in their Orion line, specifically the Neomatic New Black reference number 396. The black leather strap of the watch also harmonizes well with my black cap-toed Oxford shoes from Carmina. And the remainder of my accessories today are all from Fort Belvedere. These would include my two-toned shadow-striped socks in midnight blue and royal blue, my light blue Veronica Persica boutonniere, and my jacquard woven silk tie in battleship gray featuring a repeating diamond motif in light blue, black, and white. My white linen pocket square features a contrasting stitch in a green so dark that it almost reads as black, harmonizing with the other black elements in my outfit. And finally, the fragrance I've chosen to wear today comes from Roberto Ugolini. It is their signature scent, Oxford. This is one of my favorites in the Ugolini collection for its well-rounded scent, and also seemed appropriate because I am wearing Oxfords today. So for all of the accessories I'm wearing in today's video, including the socks, tie, and boutonniere, as well as a wide array of other classic men's accessories, corduroy trousers, and fragrances from the Roberto Ugolini collection, you can take a look at the Fort Belvedere shop here. <laughs>